Anytime you don't counter evil with good, every time you don't overrule and outdo evil with good, what you are doing is you are constructing a precedent in which all future evil that similar to the evil that was tolerated will be seen as acceptable. In the world, you have all these formality rituals in which you have to say yes sir, yes ma'am, and every time someone does not comply, there is punishment. The punishment is to cause a trauma so people comply with the formality. Why? Because if someone enters an office and they don't say yes sir, yes ma'am, or they don't say good morning or good evening, they just say hi, next time someone else does it and people stop him, that individual can legitimately say, hold on a minute, why is it that only I am addressed in this matter? The odd individual doesn't use formality either. And you guys didn't do anything, so why specifically you guys are coming after me? Then the ones that resist have something to explain that they can't explain. That's why in the world, in offices, in, in corporations, and in institutions with a formal character, they have a consistent expectation of how you should dress and how you should speak to one another. Now, that's pagan, straight up. So I'm not in favor of that at all. I'm just using that example to show you that even pagans are practical with the nonsense they're holding on to. Because even with all that formality, people are still taken advantage of abuse still happens. So the formality does not take away danger. It just gives a sense of relief that works well on the masses. Now, what I want to say in this video is, as a believer, you should counter every attack on your life with an attack on darkness. You're not being equal with evil. It works like this. Anytime Satan makes a move, you make three moves to counter it. So if Satan sent pain signals to your body to trick you into thinking your body is unhealthy, not only do you decree and declare the health on your body, you now will also examine your lifestyle to see whether it's an open door for the enemy. Then you'll also uh, make new friends or you extend your social circle. Then you'll also make an economic move. So what happened now? Not only did you counter the attack on your physical health, you countered it, you overdid it by doing extra stuff against evil that was done onto you. It'll be the same as a French a pirate, a pirate with his crew comes and robs a place in the Americas that's possessed by the Spaniards, and the Spaniards build five. Mar uh, marine bases or naval bases with 40 ships sitting around just because one pirate with his crew attacked a Spanish ship. Some would say that's overreacting. Look at it in perspective. It's better to overreact with good against evil than just ignore evil. You should never ignore evil. But you shouldn't repay evil with evil either. You shouldn't. You should not meditate on evil, but neither should you ignore it. You should counter it. You should exceed in your counteraction against evil. So, if uh, let me say this: if it happened that people lost their jobs because of some economic crisis. Or let's say there's discrimination in a society where some people just can't get a job. Build companies, build businesses to provide jobs for those people, but also teach those people how to build assets, financial assets, so that in the future they'll never be discriminated against anymore because now they have assets, now they have economic relevance. The reason they were so easily fired or the reason they were discriminated against is because they had no economic relevance. So to counter that once and for all, 
you teach them and condition them to be economically relevant. That's what I mean. When you do not counter evil by outdoing it with good, the evil will be seen as something legitimate. Even though it's not legitimate at all, but that's how people will perceive it. So if a parent is frustrated and hits a child, and the community does not counter this by holding the parent accountable and taking action against what happened to the child, what happens when one child hits another child? Now they say, oh, you can't do that. But a child that just hit another child would say, hold on a minute. I see grown-ups hating children. So why can't I, a child, not hit another child? So now the parents and also the people in the community have something to explain that they can't explain. Because how is it that someone with, how, how can it be that a grown man or a grown woman with a grown-up body, how is it that they are allowed, under some circumstances, to unload their stress on tiny human beings, but one tiny human being is not allowed to do that to another tiny human being? Does, does that add up to you? It doesn't. So anytime you don't counter evil with good by outdoing the evil that was done, you are contributing to the legitimization of evil. So in the future, when similar things happen, people will not be shocked anymore. And after all, people are desensitized towards evil. And it's only when things are completely out of hand that they'll notice something is wrong. But then it's way too late. So either you advance the kingdom of God on the earth, or you unknowingly, most of it unknowingly, are setting up precedents for evil doing. It's one of the two. Christ said, if you don't gather with me, you're scattering. So what are you doing? I agree with Christ.